Since boot camp is not yet possible on the new M1 Max, most people are turning to virtualization software such as Parallels to run Windows 10 on a Mac. For now, Parallels is only able to run the ARM-based version of Windows 10, which is an issue for some because many apps are not yet compatible with ARM versions of Windows. That being said, Parallels is working on new updates and Windows 10 has only recently announced its own version of X64 emulation, which essentially means you should soon be able to run any Windows app within Parallels. This is great for people needing to use a specific application that only works in Windows or test something in Windows even though they currently use a Mac. Now I've had heaps of people ask if they should get an 8 or 16 gigabyte RAM model of the new M1 Max specifically for running Parallels. And this is the first 8 vs 16 gigabyte RAM video where I can confidently say yes, you should get a 16 gigabyte RAM M1 Mac. My full answer is that depending on what you plan on doing within Parallels, you may be okay with 8 gigabytes, but keep watching the video to find out which choice is best for you. By the way, I made a video a few weeks ago showing you how to download and install Windows 10 on your Mac via Parallels. Make sure you check that out if you need any help, and a link to download Parallels will be in the description of this video. So I think the best way for me to show you guys how much RAM you're going to need is just by showing you on both of these machines. So these are both M1 MacBook Airs. This is the Space Gray 8 gigabyte RAM version, and this is the Silver 16 gigabyte RAM version. Now, as you can see, we do have Windows 10 running via Parallels on both of these machines. The software versions, the build numbers of Windows, everything is the exact same. No other programs are running. And if we go into the settings for parallels on both of these machines, you can see I've allocated four gigabytes of RAM on the eight gigabyte RAM Mac and doubled that. So eight gigabytes of RAM on the 16 gigabyte Mac. Now I think this makes sense because parallels themselves only recommend allocating a max of four gigabytes of RAM. And obviously on the 16 gigabyte version, I wanted to double that to see if we could see any real life differences. And obviously with the processors, I've just allocated four or 50% of the total available processors on both machines. So that is exactly the same. Now, if we move over to Activity Monitor on both devices, this is where it starts to get interesting. So for those of you who have a keen pair of eyes, you are immediately going to see that you should be going with the 16 gigabyte version. Over here, again, we're not doing anything. This is just Windows sitting on the desktop no other background programs, we're not doing anything at all. It's already using up all of the available RAM. You can see here Windows 10 is using about eight gigabytes of RAM. And in terms of memory available, we've only got about a gigabyte free. And we are using a, it's not a huge amount, but a fair amount of swap memory. And you can see just the actual memory pressure here is a lot more than the 16 gigabyte version, even though we're using double the amount of RAM on parallels over here. So moving to the 16 gigabyte version, you can see again, Windows 10 is taking pretty good advantage of the available RAM, but this still leaves us with about five gigabytes of free. And you can see we're only using about 380 megabytes of swap, which again, I won't touch on swap in this video. It's not a huge deal or issue, uh, but the main thing here is the memory pressure is a lot less. Now you can actually allocate more or less RAM to these virtual machines. I've tried on the eight gigabyte version, allocating the full eight gigs of RAM to parallels, but it doesn't really work very well because the issue I ran into was with Mac OS, it was almost completely unusable. It would take ages to load stuff, videos would stutter. So it just doesn't really work very well at all. And like I said before, you might be able to get away with the eight gigabyte version for parallels and virtualization, but only if you're doing small tasks inside Windows 10. If you need a program or anything that requires more than about four or five gigabytes of RAM, you really need the 16 gigabyte model. So what we'll do now is we'll do a few quick tests and we'll just see if we can see any kind of real life performance gains we can see with the extra 50% of RAM on this machine. So first of all, we will do Geekbench. Now, obviously this is a very CPU intensive test, so we probably won't see any difference, but it will be interesting nonetheless. Okay, so as to be expected, pretty much the exact same score there, so no surprises. So we'll move on to the next test. Okay, so it's about half an hour later and I did a few benchmarks in Geekbench and also Cinebench. I also tried to get 3D Mark working from Steam, but 
There were some issues there with X64. You still can't emulate X64 apps in Windows 10 ARM, running on Parallels for some reason, even though I'm using the correct build. Hopefully that's gonna come out in the next few weeks, some support for that, but it doesn't really matter because I couldn't really see any real life differences. Now, as you can see here, I've changed it up a little bit. So I've opened a few programs in Mac OS. So I have Chrome opened up and I'm playing a 4K video. Uh, I've also got some shopping tabs open, so really nothing too crazy. Uh, I think I've also got the Photos app open, just sitting there, uh, and I've also got Mail open. So literally just three apps, nothing else. And then if we go into Parallels on both machines, again, we've got a couple of tabs open in Microsoft Edge and some File Explorer windows as well, but nothing crazy. Now, if you come in here and look at the Activity Monitor again, you can see that there's a pretty decent spike in memory pressure on the 8 gig model versus a relatively low memory pressure on the 16 gigabyte RAM version of the M1 Mac. And this doesn't tell you everything, but it does tell you that you're gonna be maxing out the RAM over here very, very quickly. Now, like I said at the start of the video, a lot of you might be able to get away with the eight gigabyte version if you're just doing some light stuff in Windows 10 and there's nothing too important. But these days, a lot of apps actually require a minimum of eight gigabytes of RAM or even six gigabytes of RAM to run properly. And you're just not gonna be able to do that at all on the eight gigabyte version. Like I said before, there's a lot of glitching, a lot of issues if you do allocate eight gigabytes to parallels on this machine. Whereas over here, as you can see right now, we've allocated eight gigabytes and there's absolutely zero issues. We've got heaps of multitasking capability left in both Mac OS and Windows 10 on Parallels. Now, if you're some kind of developer or coder or even a video editor and you do need to do anything even remotely intensive in Parallels, definitely, without a doubt, get the 16 gigabyte version. You will not be disappointed because I can guarantee you, you will be bottlenecked if you get the eight gig version. Anyway, guys, that's it for me for this video. Just a short and straightforward one today, just because I was getting a lot of questions on this topic. If you have any questions or want me to do any more specific tests, let me know in the comment section below. But apart from that, I'll catch you guys in the next one.